Trinidad, home of beautiful beaches, waterfalls, British West Indies Airways, Calypso, Carnival, oil, and the beautiful Port of Spain, the seaside capital. And of course, Trinidad Habanero pepper sauce. 25 years ago, on this historic island, a business was born, spawned from a family recipe and Irene Montichard that was passed down for generations. Originated in 1968 by Marie Pimenter and Vernon Montrichard, the recipe for the pepper sauce is the basis for the multi-outlet Royal Castle Chicken Restaurant located in Trinidad. Today, the children of Marie Pimenter have chosen to continue the tradition of the original pepper sauce recipe, marketed separately under their own company and label based in Jacksonville, Florida in the United States. Trinidad Habanero Pepper Sauce is sold in many retail outlets throughout the country. Come with us now for a journey so you can see for yourself the sources of the naturally grown peppers and spices that continue to make Trinidad Pepper Sauce such a unique and delicious product. Sande Grande in the northeast region of Trinidad is the area where the habanero peppers are grown. The climate and soil of this island have created the ideal conditions for these plants. Producing three to four crops a year, there is virtually an endless supply of these delicious fruits. From seed to cultivation, the peppers are cared for by hand by the local farmers that are licensed by Marie Permenter and Vernon Montrichard. As the need for additional production grows, more acreage can be placed under cultivation. The pepper plants start producing fruit within three to four months of planting. Nestled in the northern range is a village called Paramin, one of the highest mountain areas in Trinidad. This is home to many farming families. It is here that the herbs and spices for the pepper sauce are grown. The extreme slopes of these mountains cause the rainfall to keep the plants appropriately wet and yet allows the water to run off. The roots of these herbs and spices cannot grow in standing water. Spanish thyme, locally known as broadleaf thyme, basil, and oregano are grown here by farmers whose families have been here for generations, many never leaving the mountaintops. It has been attempted to grow these spices and herbs in other regions, but it has been to no avail. Okay, we're standing here in Paramin, which is in the northern uh, mountain range of Trinidad, and I'm standing here with uh, Duffy, who is a seasoning farmer here in this range. And Duffy grows many of the spices that are utilized in the uh, habanero pepper sauce. And we're going to allow Duffy to explain why most of these, if not all, these seasonings have to grow on these particular mountain ranges uh, here in Trinidad. Yes, well, um, it came from tradition, as I know, that um, Sive and all the other seasonings, the times, grow in this area. We grow it on the, on the mountain ranges up in Paramount because of the fact that they can't take too much water in the flat. And up here, although it, we do bet, better um, business in the rainy season, the water runs off very quickly. You get, it'll get rain this morning, and by the afternoon time, you have a dry piece of land again. Right? And the season, they love that. They love hard land, but you need a lot of water for them to grow in. Right. And this particular region in Trinidad seems to be most favorable for growing these. Yeah. And you've tried in other areas, but this particular mm -hmm. area is the yes. most suitable. Yeah, it's most suitable, there. yeah. Right. And many of these people up here have done this for generations and generations. Yeah. It's only in the, for the last 20, 25 years that you'll find people from Parmen looking for work in Port of Spain. Mm -hmm. right. Normally, if they didn't, they didn't grow season like what I do, they have cocoa estates and coffee estates that they work in. So people didn't used to go into Port of Spain to look for work at all. Everybody used to work in Parmen from a small tribe here. The herbs and spices are cultivated on a daily basis. They are then taken to the factory for processing with the peppers. They are taken down out of the mountains as they have been since time, on the backs of donkeys. Once the peppers and spices arrive at the factory in Arima in Trinidad, they are then cleaned and prepared for the marinade and sauce base. We will now introduce you to Marie Permenter and Vernon Montrichard, who founded this business and are still active in managing the Royal Castles and preparing the sauces on a daily basis. I am Vernon Montrichard of Royal Castle, Managing Director. 
is my partner, Marie Comenter, who was up with the Royal Castle. How many years have you been here now? Since 1968. Since 1968. Where we are now is the factory where famous episodes are made. This here is all the ingredients that goes in our episodes. The only thing that's missing is the ginger, which comes from St. Vincent. This is the celery that is cleaned, then weighed. Everything is portion controlled. Our garlic is fresh. Mostly it comes from California or from Argentina. This one is from Argentina. All this have to be and eaten. These are some peppers just came back from the field. And um, here in front of there, we do not concern ourselves too much about the color and pepper sauce, which is used in the Royal Castle. But in the United States, where the front of pepper sauce is made, we are sorted. And the different heat flavors we use, the different colors. The heat of the peppers is the same, but the extra hot, we use red only difference of color. Again, onions all have to be hand peeled. This is a fine leaf mint that comes from the hills of Paramin. Um, this needs a lot of water, but it grows on a hillside where the water has to run off as quickly as possible. It'll take another two or three weeks for the rains for this to be in full bloom. This is a basil. Again, you can see it's all fresh. And everything in our pepper sauce is fresh. And also what is done in the States. This is a game from the Hills of Armin. It's called a broadleaf mint or Spanish thyme. What you see they're doing here, they are picking. Everything has, when this comes out, we get it, get it with the stems and everything. Then it has to be like you see they're doing it here, clean, then wait. Because at various times, they, you can get more of the leaf than the stem. There's no color, there's no artificial color, no starch, everything, just like you see it. Now, we cannot control the finished product, the color of the finished product. In a of the winds of nature is what you're going to end up with. Sometimes, this is as deep as chlorophyll, real deep green. The pepper sauce will be green. We do not try it then if you have a lighter one to add a green colorant. We try to maintain the same level. Whatever color comes out, that's what you get. Our chickens are marinated in a temperature control room using this marinade, which is made from everything you see here. That's why the flavor, it gets right down to the bone of the chicken, not only in the skin of the chicken, like some other people. And this marinade is made the same way the housewife made it in front of that. Well, as long as I know, and long before that. In those days, there was no refrigeration. So it took all of the seasoning, cut it up, put it in the chicken, cover it. They didn't call it marinade in those days. We said we were seasoning the chicken. But we do exactly the same thing. That's why our pepper sauce and our chicken has that local flavor that people really like. We make, uh, we have the Trinidad pepper sauce, which is manufactured in Daxville. But what we do in this end, we use the hot peppers. They, the, the, mint, the mint and the basil, the broadly. This and the ginger from St. Vincent. Now, all that is put in, the, in drums and then stored in a temperature control room. Then, in Jacksonville, Florida, they add a fresh celery, fresh onions, fresh, fresh bell peppers, and uh, what else do you put there? The vinegar? In, in Jacksonville. And again, the product is the, uh, the only difference is the redness if they use the extra hot. But what they do in Jacksonville is exactly what we do here. But in the States, your, your celery, there's a lot more flavor in the celery. But same, same day, no, no 
papaya and no starch, no, no nothing. It's a lot of goodness. The recipe for this pepper sauce that you're discussing at this moment came from the families of Vernon and Irene Montrichard. It goes back to their old family recipes that their mothers used at home when they seasoned chickens. So from that point, we developed the recipe that we use. And it is not a hit and miss recipe. It's taken and measured gram by gram, or ounce by ounce, if you want to go that way. And so that we always have a consistency in flavor. We may not have a consistency in color, as Mr. Montrichard says, because we do use a different color peppers to make a different color pepper sauce. The one we make in Trinidad is made up all the peppers, so the color here would be different than what is made in the States. Uh, what we do to this in the States, as Mr. Montrichard told you, we take the seasoning plus the peppers plus ginger, and we put it in 55-gallon dr glass-lined drums and ship that to Jacksonville Beach, Florida, where it is then um, all the rest of the fresh vegetables, including celery, sweet peppers, and garlic, and onions are added to it over there. And then it is cooked over there because we put it on the retail market. All right, this is our cold storage area, where as quickly as we have processed the various herbs and spices in our processing room, we immediately put them into 55-gallon glass-lined drums, and immediately they are then stored in our in our cool room here, in our uh, chill room here, where the temperature is controlled. They are stored here until shipment ready to go to the United States for the pepper sauce that they make in Jacksonville, Florida. We hope you have enjoyed watching our story about Trinidad habanero pepper sauce and its origins. Although the Jacksonville, Florida-based operation is only a little over a year old, we have received much acclaim from many regional and nationally recognized periodicals. Already available in many retail outlets throughout the United States, we are currently looking to expand availability internationally. We hope you will take the time to try our delicious sauces, and we're sure you will enjoy the many and varied uses. Again, thank you for taking the time to view our story, and we welcome you as a member of our extended Caribbean family.